Hello, and welcome to Know Before You Go, a program of the Dominican Central Province of St. Albert the Great that allows us to take a look ahead at the upcoming weekend's readings. I am Father Jim Marchanda, Provincial of the Chicago Dominicans, and I am happy to be with you once again as we approach the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Once again, we're having some construction done here at the Provincial Office Building, so you might hear some construction noise in the background once in a while. For this fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are, giving some, we are given some pretty good challenges about a theme very dear to my heart, and that is making sure that we operate from the perspective of humility, that everything we do comes from our being grounded in our personal sense of humility. The first reading is from the prophet Zephaniah, 7th century prophet before Christ. The second reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, and the gospel is from St. Matthew. Zephaniah and Matthew mirror one another in calling us to humility. We hear it beautifully as Zephaniah opens with, Seek the Lord, all who are humble. He goes on to say, seek justice, seek humility. For me, that means seek the righteousness of all peoples. Make sure that the entire world, no matter who those people are in the world who suffer, make sure that justice is done for them. Make sure righteousness is part of your work on their behalf. And make sure you know the humility that allows you to look after others and not just after yourselves. Seek justice, seek humility, says Zephaniah. A little later, he says he's going to leave a remnant of the people of Israel. And I love what he says about them. He says, they shall do no wrong and they shall speak no lies. Oh, my Lord, do we need that teaching today? In our world, in our politics, they will speak no lies. Imagine the world without lies. Let us pray to get back to that. Now that idea of the humble being the ones who set things right is mirrored by the Gospel of St. Matthew with the teaching of the Beatitudes. We know them so well, don't we? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are you when you mourn. Blessed the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed the merciful, the clean of heart, the peacemakers, and then even the persecuted, the insulted, all those who suffer. Blessed are you when you find yourselves humbly grounded in some major, major challenges of life. And then, of course, there's a promise at the end of each blessing, for you'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. You'll be comforted. You will have grace all around you. You will be enlightened. There's a gift at the end of every suffering. But the point is that those who suffer, the little people, the people on the fringe, the people on the edge, are somehow in the favor of God. They are in God's eye. And hopefully, all those who suffer will trust, even in their suffering, that God, in fact, has God's eye on them. God has their backs. So those two readings challenge us to accept the image or the vision that God presented of needing us to be grounded in humility so as to instruct us in the ways that we should go. And the opposite of trying to achieve the greatest thing we can possibly achieve in life. Instead, realizing our smallness and being comfortable there, being comfortable in our own skin. That's exactly what St. Paul says to the Corinthians in his first letter to them. It's, so, it's such a good teaching. Listen to this. Consider your own calling. Not many of you were wise. 
by human standards, right? Not many powerful. Not many of you are of noble birth. But rather, God chose the foolish to shame the wise. God chose the weak to shame the strong. God chose the lowly, those who count for nothing, to challenge those who think they are something and to keep them in right perspective. He ends by saying, so that no one can boast. All we are, my friends, is due to Jesus Christ, not us. The light is not ours. The light is God's. And if it is shining on us, in us, and through us, we must make sure we have the humility to acknowledge where it comes from so that we know the role we play in setting things right, in helping those who need justice. He ends his reading by saying, there should be no boasting, but if you boast at all, boast in the Lord. So my friends, I think that's the gift of this weekend's readings, the challenge of this weekend's readings, that not many of us were of noble birth, not many of us were wise, not many of us are powerful by our own power. It all comes from God, whatever we have, and we need the humility to know how to direct that power through us, out of us, and never claim it for ourselves. One of my good friends, you know how we send all kinds of little uh, inspirational things on the internet these days. One of my good friends just yesterday sent me these words. How cool is it that the same God who created mountains and oceans and galaxies looked at you and the thought the world needed one of you too. How cool is it that the same God who created mountains and oceans and galaxies looked at you and thought the world needed one of you too? That's where we boast, that this incredible, magnificent, beyond description God who made everything that you and I know in this universe created us as well, regarded us as beautifully as God regarded everything else created. Let us boast in the Lord and then assume our proper grounding in humility so that we make sure the gifts we have are used for someone and others other than ourselves. May God give us that humility. May God give us that wisdom. And may we be among those that God uses to transform the world. God bless you all.